A big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. If you need a website or a domain, go to squarespace.com forward slash James for 10% off your first purchase. Well, hello everybody. I hope you're all well and uh, welcome back to the channel. Um, I've got a paper map again, which didn't go brilliantly a few weeks back, but never mind. Um, a couple of years ago, I was doing one of my favorite things in the world, which is to peruse Google Street View to try and find places around where I live or across the UK or across Europe, wherever really, uh, that might suit my kind of photography. And uh, if you're new to this channel, basically I would describe that as trying to capture the relationship between man-made stuff and nature. Uh, I'm working on a book called Human Nature. I have been for several years now, but I'm soon to be accepting pre-orders on the book. Uh, I've paid the printer a deposit. Very, very exciting, so look out for that if you're interested. But uh, I came across basically this town called Calpe in Spain when I was on Google Street View one evening. And uh, essentially it's a resort type town. Lots of British people go there on holiday, I think. Uh, but there's a rock that sort of heads out to sea. And I think it looks quite interesting, quite kind of dystopian and a bit odd. You don't necessarily expect to see it, and I thought that looks like an interesting place. And given that I've uh, I've made some headway recently with the book, and given that we'll soon be going to print, I thought if I want a photo from here included in the book, I best get my skates on. So last week I headed to Spain to go and try and take a photo. And uh, the first half of this video will be yeah some photos that I took in Spain last week. The second half of the video I'll talk a little bit about light and a rule that I like to follow for. Uh, shooting in, in bright conditions when the sun's out. And I hate rules in photography as a rule, but um, a guideline, it's more of a guideline, as is the rule of thirds and all the other rules. I don't know why they're called rules. Uh, it's getting quite hot now. Although, to be honest, you probably shouldn't listen to a British person say that, most of you. You'll be severely disappointed. But if you're British, it's getting hot. Is that rubbed in? Hey, got mum. Your 35 year old son looking after himself. Who'd have thought? Um, I don't know really how best to document this rock. I mean, really, what I want to do is show the relationship between it and the town, hence trying to find streets that lead up to it and things like that. It's kind of my style, I guess, isn't it? The, the human nature thing. But um, yeah, outside of that, I don't really have a concrete plan. Uh, I did look last night on Google Street View a little bit to work out what, what streets kind of point at it. But outside of that, I've, I've basically done no research. Uh, and there are pros and cons to that. I don't particularly like doing research these days. I love to rock up to a place and discover them for the first time with my eyes. And uh, I'm doing a bit of that today, but like I said, I, I did look at Google Street View a little bit last night as well. Uh, now I did promise myself when I came here, given that I was hoping to get some photos in this rock, that that wouldn't be to the detriment of other photos that didn't include the rock. But this morning I'm, I'm not sticking to that at all. All I'm really doing is concentrating on trying to find scenes that include this, which I guess isn't great because I'm missing shots, but the pro is that, uh, well, I'm, I'm probably taking photos that I wouldn't otherwise take if this wasn't my sole focus. And I think sometimes that can make you a better photographer. If you just have one subject and you try and find lots of different ways to incorporate that subject into your work, then you end up spending time at scenes that you otherwise wouldn't spend time at, trying to work compositions for much longer than you otherwise would. So I guess that's a, that's a positive. And it doesn't mean you're constantly gonna be creating great photos as I imagine you've already seen from this video, but um, it does mean that you work harder at each place you get to. And I think that can only be a good thing. Mm -hmm. 
I'm, um, as a rule, I'm shooting between a stop and a stop and a half overexposed today. As many of you know, as a rule, I, I tend to shoot or edit quite bright photos as it is, but particularly in a place like this on a day like today, I've got no interest in lots and lots of contrast. I want these images to be bright and lively and uh, vibrant. So yeah, not too concerned about things like deep blacks today. I think a bit further back here actually, maybe that road over there will work well. Oh, no wonder it smells here, that is disgusting. No, I don't like that. Move away. Um, I've had some really nice feedback on this channel recently uh, from people who've watched videos that they have said have inspired them to um, go out and shoot in places that conventionally they might not have considered worthy of shooting, whether that be where they live or they visited places that they might not have taken a camera in the past. And that is really nice to hear because um, there will always be videos from places like Iceland, you know, places that are considered conventionally pretty or dramatic enough to take photos in. But um, yeah, I really enjoy coming to places that maybe aren't famous for photography and having a go. One of my favorite things to do. And it's not for everyone. There will definitely be people watching this who enjoy photographing waterfalls or the Northern Lights thinking, why on earth is he trying to photograph a little? And I get that, but uh, I really do enjoy the challenge. Oh, smell. That lamp post in the gap is, is quite pleasing. But uh, best part of 30,000 steps in and it's really getting hot now. So even that level of visual pleasingness is, um, is wearing thin, as you can tell by my use of the word pleasingness. Might be time to go and dunk myself in the Mediterranean. Uh, so yeah, they are some photos that I took, uh, quite pleased with some of them. And I spent a few days heading around the town trying to find the best perspectives to uh, get a shot that includes this rock, but also some semblance of the town and the human imprint on that bit of land. Uh, but I did find it quite tricky. I went up high and away from the rock at times, uh, but it doesn't look quite as imposing when you're high. And then you've got to deal with the light on the water, which is a bit tricky. Uh, and so most of my favourite images from last week uh, were from lower down, where the rock looks a bit more imposing. But I think my absolute favorite photo uh, was this one. Uh, basically, I headed off one morning inland, I don't know where that came from, uh, to explore a tiny little village. And on the way back, uh, I stopped at this spot, where obviously there's a lorry parked up. And in the background, you've just sort of got this faint outline of uh, the rock. And the fact that it's so backlit with very little detail on it, I think adds to the mystery uh, and intrigue of it. So uh, I think that's my favourite photo. Not to everyone's taste. As I said, people think it's a bit odd that I end up taking photos of supermarkets and such. But that, I think, perfectly sums up this relationship between man-made things and nature that I'm trying to explore in the project of uh, human nature. Available soon in no good bookshops. Just my website. Anyway, that leads on to uh, a conversation that I've wanted to have on this channel for quite a while about light and this rule slash guide that I like to follow. Uh, now, lots of photographers that I know absolutely love to shoot in golden hour because obviously the light is incredibly beautiful and you can basically shoot in any direction because it just looks fantastic everywhere. Uh, now, I don't mind shooting in golden hour, but one of my biggest problems with shooting in golden hour is that often the light is so incredible that rather than just decorate your scene and your subject, it completely steals attention from your scene and your subject and just becomes the subject. Uh, because a lot of my work is subject driven, I find often that really beautiful light or golden hour light particularly is to the detriment 
of that photo. So often, I much prefer to shoot uh, in flat light, where the clouds just basically act as a massive softbox for your scene, uh, and you can shoot again in any direction, and everything just looks fantastic. And I love to shoot in the time after golden hour on a sunny day. And there is a point where the sun just gets so high in the sky, particularly in summer, that you can't really shoot in any direction because there are no shadows on the floor, there's no depth to the scene, and everything looks really harsh. But I do find the sort of two or three hours after golden hour, where so long as you obey one rule, one guideline, you can get some really beautiful photos. Uh, and that rule is this. When I'm shooting uh, after golden hour in the morning or before golden hour in the evening, what I want to do is to keep the sun in front of me. And if I was to draw a circle around myself, I want to keep it in the front 180 degrees, basically. So if I stick my arms out, I wanna make sure that the sun is somewhere in this half circle in front of me. I never want the sun to touch my back. And the reason for that is that when the sun is behind you, everything becomes much more evenly lit and you lose so much depth that the light can otherwise give you if the sun is in front of you. And my absolute gold standard for light, perfect conditions for me, are when I can find a composition and a focal length that means I can have the sun just outside of my frame, either above my frame or to the side of it. And that works just as well in golden hour as it does after or before golden hour, as far as I'm concerned. Now, obviously, there are times where you rock up at a place and you've got just the most compelling subject that you think looks really, really nice, but the sun's behind you and obviously you can't move the sun or your subject, so there's not a whole lot you can do about it. And in those cases, I do think it's still perfectly possible to shoot, but I think in order to get compelling photos in those instances, you need to use other tools to add depth to a scene other than the light. And so in those cases, often I'll like to use things like power lines or telephone lines even more than I otherwise do because they're brilliant at dragging your eye through a scene and creating depth. Uh, I like to use frames within frames in those instances. Again, they're fantastic for creating depth. Or you just wanna find other ways to show your viewer depth in a scene. But I find as a photographer, it's much more freeing to be able to use light to do that and to not have to hunt for these other tools uh, to create depth in your photographs. Um, so yeah, hopefully that answers some of the questions that I get about how I deal with light and how I compose uh, to take account of the light in front of me. Uh, and hopefully that's useful. The 180 degree rule, I'm gonna call it. Again, it's not a rule, it's a guideline. I've not heard anyone talk about 180 degrees, so I'm gonna coin that. Probably quite famous. Uh, now, big thank you to the sponsor of this week's video, Squarespace. And on my Squarespace website, I'm gonna be selling my new print, which is this one I photographed in Cornwall a couple of months back, uh, and a photo that perfectly illustrates my use of the sun just outside the frame, up here somewhere the sun was. Uh, so yeah, very happy with that. Probably my favorite photo I've taken this year to date. Uh, so yeah, if you want an online store, Squarespace works fantastically for that. It's brilliantly simple to use, uh, and I've used it for years to sell all of my products. But it is so much more than that. I also use it as a blog. Uh, I use Squarespace to send out all my newsletters for my business. And of course, my Squarespace website is the most prominent place for my portfolio. And I trust Squarespace implicitly for all of it. And you get a huge amount of flexibility for setup as a photographer in terms of how you want your images to appear, how you want the text to look, how much space you want around things. And you don't need to know a single line of code to do any of that. It's all drag and drop and it's all made seamless and I absolutely love it. So if you would like a Squarespace website, uh, then you can get a free trial uh, by going to squarespace.com. And after that, if you'd like to make a purchase, just go to squarespace.com forward slash James and you'll get 10% off that first purchase. So a big thank you to Squarespace for their continued support of this channel and thank you to you for watching and hopefully buying a print, some of you, uh, or the book, which will be available soon, very, very soon. I'm really excited about that. It's It's been a long time coming, so yeah, can't wait. Anyway, I'll see you next time when we'll be talking about some other concept in photography. Thanks for watching.